Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. It's Travis here with JT Wealth. In today's video, we're doing a in-depth follow-up to yesterday's Ethereum video. Yesterday, we talked about a lot of price predictions and gave some broad scope information about why those analysts and those investors thought Ethereum was going to go to such highs, such as $40,000. But in today's video, I want to go over exactly why they think that. Things such as the scarcity engine and the merge that when combined create the triple happening and have everybody in Ethereum super excited about the late July, early August timeframe and what's going to happen to the Ethereum price. So let's get into it. All right, like I said, everybody, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us. Before we get into anything, please, if you're new to the channel, please consider giving us a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification down below so you get notified every time I put out a new video. And yesterday we did an Ethereum video. It got a lot of views. So I wanted to bring you guys a much more in-depth version of yesterday's video so that you would have a better idea of where those analysts were coming up with their price targets. I know giving you guys the articles is important, but having a deep understanding of why Ethereum and its networks are pushing forward so fast such that it could eclipse Bitcoin or reach a $40,000 price target is very important to you. So I want to make sure I give you the most up-to-date information I can. Can. So for example, yesterday's video showcased this article, Ethereum's price could hit $40,000 in the long run, according to the Winklevoss twins. Now they run Gemini Capital and they have Ethereum within their platforms, so they know a thing or two about cryptocurrencies. But we can't just take their word for it. We need to understand exactly what it is they're looking at to come up with a price target so exorbitant from today's current prices. And believe it or not, if you're out there looking for information on Ethereum or cryptocurrency as a whole, yes, you could go to all the normal finance websites. But what I have found is that just getting on Twitter and going to all the Ethereum posts, you're going to find a serious, serious value trove of information out there for you guys to look through, sift through and find out whatever's going on at the current moment. So that being said, let's take a look at what I found on Twitter this morning to give you guys these updates. And this post here is a good indicator for the adoption and growing usage of Ethereum is the number of transactions per day as seen here compared to Bitcoin. We live in an exponential era. So here you can see the number of transactions in blockchain per day for Bitcoin and Ethereum transactions on a historical chart from 2010 to 2020. And you can tell that in red Ethereum's transactions per day have far exceeded Bitcoin's. And that massive push in 2020 alone is because people are starting to realize that although Bitcoin is a store of value, Ethereum is so much more than a store of value. Moving on, there's this fantastic post, and this is a quote from JP Morgan. It says, we estimate that staking is currently a $9 billion business for the crypto economy and will grow to 20 billion following the Ethereum merge and could get to $40 billion by 2025 should the proof of work grow to the dominant protocol. And that's like I said, from JP Morgan Equity Research. So knowing that we could jump from 9 billion of the crypto economy to over 40 billion just based on the Ethereum network, this is insane information. But what is the merge? How does that work? What's coming before the merge? Hint, it's coming up soon. And what's going to happen when both of those things combine to create the triple happening, which is the point of this massive influx up to that $40 billion mark. Let's talk more about that. And in this post, which is, we're going to call this post one of two because there was a bit of an update. It says, finally, it's official. The scarcity engine, AKA the triple halvening or the London upgrade will be added to the ether's main net on August 4th. Real ether, real ether will be set ablaze within a month's time. And that po that post quotes the post below that says, yep, unless someone objects in the next 24 hours, London should land on August 4th. A few client teams have given it the thumbs up already, but we want to be sure no one has a serious objection. Keep an eye out. And now mind you, the specific date of August 4th isn't finite, okay? What is finite is the specific block that they have decided will be the the main effort for the London upgrade, and that is the 12,965,000th block that is expected to land on around August 4th. 
Now here's the second version of that same post with some kind of updates to make it more accurate. And it says, no more delays, EIP 1559 is being added within a month. The scarcity engine, otherwise known as EIP 1559, goes live August 4th. Now the scarcity engine or Ethereum improvement proposal 1559 was added to the London fork that should actually kick off on August 4th. And it's essentially a proposal to change Ethereum's fee structure, but it's also known as the scarcity engine because it's basically the Ethereum's burn mechanism. And it's the combination of that EIP 1559 or the scarcity engine and the merge of the POS that's going to create the triple halvening. So the first one starts off the triple halvening and the merge completes it. And here there's a Discord and Twitter confirmation with Friday it being an official with no objections from the Twitter community. Now the scarcity engine has sometimes been referred to as a deflationary uh, impact on Ethereum, meaning that as people burn through the Ethereum by, by working through it, mining it on the blockchain, there's actually going to be every transaction is going to create a little bit of Ethereum getting thrown away. Okay, so you're going to lose Ethereum little by little over time. And that is why they're calling the scarcity project or the scarcity engine deflationary in nature, because instead of having more Bitcoin, you are going to end up having less over time, creating that larger demand for something that's no longer in such uh, mass amounts, right? Take a look at this chart, for example. It's Ethereum supply on exchange ratio sees the major drop and it matches the lowest exchange percentage in 30 months. So the Ether exchange supply has, is at its lowest since November of 2018. So your green line there is the price of Ethereum. That purple line, as you're looking at it, is the amount of Ethereum still on exchange networks. And that has seriously diminished over time. So we're looking at a decrease in the overall available supply of Ethereum. And that's even without the, sca the scarcity engine's impact. Okay, so as the demand for Ether continues to increase and the supply continues to decrease, we are going to see a massive increase in the price of Ethereum. A lot of people see this coming. They, they can read the writing on the wall and one person, individual, maybe an individual, maybe an institution, but one group bought 600,000 Ethereum recently. Check this out. Now this was posted a couple days ago and it says 600,000 Ethereum transfer from Binance to a private wallet appears legit and is not an internal Binance transfer. So the glass node data supports a negative $1.5 billion net flow of Ethereum yesterday. Ethereum is now officially at an all time low on exchanges not seen since 2018 like the graph we just looked at. Now that 600,000 Ethereum wasn't all purchased at the same time from one individual account but it was purchased through several accounts all owned by the same person or the same entity as verified through the blockchain technology. Now 600,000 Ethereum at today's price means somebody invested $1.4 billion into Ethereum. That is somebody who is extremely bullish on the outlook of Ethereum token and I can certainly understand why. And Ethereum has made it so mainstream that they're even putting on festivals. Check this out. Decentraland is to host Ethereum's first music festival. So next Sunday, Ethereum based computer game Decentraland will host a virtual live music festival called To The Moon. The festival will start at exactly 6 p.m. UTC on July 11th, 2021. Of note, Decentraland is a decentralized virtual reality platform powered by the Ethereum blockchain. It's a browser-based and crypto-powered online game with Minecraft-style and Second Life-style socializing. Mana is its Ethereum-based in-game currency, and with it, holders can buy in-game items and any one of 90,000 plots of in-game land as NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Meanwhile, To The Moon is the name of the Music and Arts Festival. It's a collaboration between Known Origin and NFT Marketplace, Illumino and NFT Tastemaker Collective, and Bear NFT. Known Origin is hosting the festival as its virtual headquarters, and the online music acts include performances by OK, SNBRN, Fred Thirst, Autograph, and Win and & Woo. 
And yes, the EIP-1559 is kind of just a short-term temporary fix before Ethereum 2.0's staking method takes over and really impacts the share price. But nonetheless, it's a lot to be excited about in the near term. Okay, now lastly, guys, I just want to leave you with this. I found 24 reasons Ethereum is extremely undervalued. And that 24 reasons is out there on Twitter and you can check it out. But because it's 24 reasons and that's a lot to cover, I'm creating another video today on that specific thread. So I'm gonna cover most, not all, but most of those 24 reasons Ethereum is still undervalued and we're gonna go in depth into some of them so that you can better understand what these guys are looking at and give you guys the information I'm finding out there on the Twitter network, okay? So look forward to that video later on this afternoon, but for now guys, that's all the information I've got in this video. Can't wait to talk to you guys about those 24 reasons Ethereum is undervalued and give you guys a better understanding of why this is something that should be in your portfolio should you decide by your own due diligence to purchase it. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not recommending you buy or sell anything. And this video is just for information and entertainment purposes only. Thanks so much for checking us out, guys. It's a little too early for a beer today, but I'll get you next time. Thanks again, guys. Until next time, take it easy.